What's up everybody? This is Dave Miller from Gripping Golf Concast and I am coming to you from my basement where I'm about to take you on a tour of my workshop. Um, hope you guys enjoy golf nerdery in the form of tools, equipment, and the such. Uh, here we go. Let's get started. We're about to shoot a shot. The first thing you're going to see when you come into my workshop is a bunch of boxes. Uh, when you're an importer and exporter of golf goods such as I am, uh, you tend to keep boxes just in case you need something else to buy or sell. Um, as we pan around, you'll see I've got all kinds of stuff going on in here. Um, and we'll kind of break down some of it individually as we go. But this is the main overview. It's not a huge shop, but it gets the job done. Um, like I said, I'll take you through some of the tools and some of the stuff that I've got. The first major thing is the putter rack. We talked about that in a podcast. This is a homemade putter rack made from the walnut tree from John Johnson's dad's property. Um, if we go down the row here, I've got a tailor-made Kiama Daytona, a Betnardi, uh, my machine putter that Billy talks about a lot, um, my Scotty Cameron Monterey, my Scotty Cameron Studio Design 1.5, my Spider, and then that's my Byron Morgan. Um, it's my Bombora that I have. I uh, have a couple that don't fit on the rack. I got another Kia Ma and my Scotty uh, Phantom X 5.5. Uh, assortment of head covers. I got a bunch of ball markers there too. Haven't played all those courses. Some of those friends bought for me while they were on vacation and brought it back because they're good dudes. So. Um, as we go along further, see I got my pegboard with a bunch of tools. Not all of those are golf related. Um, the main ones that get used for golf are down here in the little corner, uh, along with some of the chemicals and stuff, uh, epoxy, screwdrivers. The knife is another big deal and some tape. Um, the drills get used quite a bit. And then, you know, the most important one when you buy and sell a lot of golf clubs is the roll of tape. It makes it a lot a lot easier to package things. Um, got some more stuff stashed away. You're going to find out I'm quite a pack rat. Um, I'm able to fit a lot of stuff into smaller spaces. Um, but I got some additional tools and stuff down here. Air compressor. Got a buffing wheel. My cutoff saw. All kinds of stuff down there. Um, my workout equipment, which isn't currently getting used a whole lot. But uh, will be shortly. Drill pass. Vacuum cleaner. All that kind of stuff. Um, it's always Miller time in my house. Got an assortment. Hey, there's my vintage 90s Iowa shelf system. You got to have tunes when you're busting out the, the work product here. Some proof that maybe I was once a decent golfer, uh, and twice also a decent golfer. Um, and then some of the more heavy equipment down here. Got some belt sanders, uh, grinders and things like that. And then of course my two guitar collection. Um, here I'm going to break down a few things, get some stuff out, show you a little more up close. Um, and I'll just show you kind of the stuff that I use on a pretty frequent basis to repair clubs. Okay, so one of the first bags I want to look at, uh, I got it kind of shoved in the back there, pulled it out just for fun. Uh, something with some older clubs, things that I just mess around with from time to time, some ridiculous experiments and things like that. Um, you see I got a few older putters in here. Uh, and this Northwestern Gary Player putter came from my very first set of clubs, a uh, vintage one that I kept. Um, this putter actually is not legal for tournament play because it has a rounded face, but uh, my wife bought it for me when we were dating. Uh, I got to hang on to that relic, right? Um, here's an old Ping putter, Spalding TP Mills, Mizuno TP Mills. Um, this is a Maltby humongous putter head. Um, I got that just for fun when I was learning how to build clubs and things like that. And this Cleveland Bullseye, which is probably one of the softest things you'll you'll ever play. One of my favorite clubs in this bag, though, is my 80 degree Dr. Knockdown Wedge. Uh, we'll take it out on the course sometime. Have a little fun with that. Um, got an old V-Steel in here. This right here is actually a vintage Killer B. 
uh, but I've got a head cover on. So a few demo clubs, a few wedges that are not getting used, but, uh, you know, just fun stuff to have lying around. Just you never know when it might come in handy to use. The next thing I got that I kind of pulled out of uh, the back there is my big bag of shafts here. Uh, I got a lot of putter shafts, three wood shafts laying around, uh, hybrid shafts, a few iron shafts in there. Um, over the winter I got pretty bored so I ended up reshafting all those putters that are on my putter rack. Uh, so the majority of the shafts in here are actually putter shafts. Why did I do it? I don't know. Like I said, I was extremely bored, but uh, it's always good to have a stock of shafts in there because you just never know when that might come in handy. So uh, you usually keep them tucked out of the way because, uh, again, base is at a premium, but, uh, you know, another handy thing to have around. Always got to have spares. Okay, so some of the essential tools of the trade that I have here. Um, I've got my putter or any just grip removal tool, honestly. Some acetone. Uh, my propane torches, paper towels, always going to need those. This is my gripping station. I currently have it set up in one of my two vices that I have, bench vices on my bench there. It's not always set up this way. As you can see, it's a little bit of an inconvenience, kind of in the way of everything. But uh, when I usually leave it set up because I'm usually constantly changing grips. But another good thing to have is the bench grinder for if you decide you want to grind away at some wedges. I've done some custom grinds in the past for a little fun, just see if I can do it. Not bad to have around. Really essential tool though is this one inch belt sander. With its current setup with the sandpaper here, you can prep shaft tips um, and then you can also swap it out for one of these uh, nylon belts right here to finish ferrules. So very handy tool. I got my chop saw here, that's for shortening shafts, makes the cuts real quick and easy. I uh, usually just use that for steel shafts. I actually have up there uh, my hacksaw, I've got a graphite cutting blade on that as well. And then the other big piece of equipment is my loft and lie bending machine. So um, I can typically do just about any kind of repairs I need to with the equipment that I have on hand. There's a few things I can't do, but overall uh, I've got enough to, to really do probably like 80 to 90 percent of the club work that uh, I require at a minimum so uh, yeah th those are the big tools um, I guess I should also go over my air compressor um, you know you can install grips and pull grips off with that and under here as well I have another grinder but I've got it set up for polishing so when I do my custom grinds which I haven't done in years on my regular grinder I can get the soles polished up so it looks nice and pretty on the bottom. Okay, so some other fun stuff I've got are the small items that I have in the shop. Again, these are not all things that I use all the time, but they're fun to have around. Got my CH Hansen set of stamps in case I ever want to do custom stamping. Still a skill I'm trying to acquire, but uh, eventually I'm going to get there. In this container here, I've got extra grip tape, some epoxy. Um, Club shield, what that does is uh, keep stuff from burning when you're pulling shafts and things like that from golf clubs. Got a grip tape removing tool, mixing sticks. Uh, here I've got some polishing and grinding stuff. Uh, a lot of the stuff I don't end up using any longer, especially those shaft plugs. Those are for like through bore shafts. I think old Titleist drivers um, don't really have those anymore. This is more paint and polishing compounds and additional mixing sticks and, and things like that. I don't know if I showed you the mixing compounds and stuff there, but uh, in this container, I've got a whole bunch of stuff. It's amazing what all you can fit in something like this. These are my back weighting tools for my putters and wedges. Got some ferrules, um, club tools there for removing heads. Uh, those are mostly guitar parts. I took that up during COVID, um, but that's for uh, setting a ferrule, this red item here. Some more swing weighting stuff and some uh, Scotty weights, it looks like. Screwdrivers, Allen wrenches. Uh, well, that's more guitar stuff too, the heat shrink. Those are for cleaning out hosels. Uh, 
lighter for starting the torch. Sharpies, gotta have sharpies. Utility knife, batteries. Ah, there's some shaft tips there. A couple pings and a cobra. Um, that's for cutting the butt end of a grip to put in some of those back weights. Those are more hosel cleaning devices. A whole boatload of shaft tips for more obsolete clubs. And then these are the little tools that I use to actually pull those tips. Maybe we'll do a video showing those one day. Uh, I got my shaft extracting tool here. Uh, you just clamp the shaft in there, apply some heat, and this pulls it apart, spring-loaded. Um, Got to have a Dremel for small repairs, so your club bounced across the cart path. Got to have that. Um, I got a little kit here full of ferrules. Got that from Golf Works, as you can see on the package there. I've got a homemade spine alignment tool that kind of helps get the shaft set up to optimum performance. Um, some people believe in them, some people don't. Uh, I figure, what can it hurt using it? Whole bunch of model paint if you want to do custom paint jobs on your putters or wedges. Whole bunch of grips. Got putter grips, club grips, brand new. Always got to have a stock of grips on hand. So those are the main smaller items that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, can't think, I don't think there's anything else in there other than a few chemicals. Got some silicone spray down there for some of those Scotty putters so they don't, uh, they don't rust since they're a raw finish. Um, and then I got a little turtle wax kit down there that you can see. That's for buffing out sky marks and stuff like that on your driver head. Beyond that though, that's, uh, those are the main components of the shop. The main things that you'll, you'll see me using from time to time when I post videos. Um, if there's anything that you see in here that you're like, what the heck is that? Feel free to drop me a line. I'll be happy to answer that question. Some of the tools that I have, uh, I'll show you my secret stash of stuff here too. Uh, I've got a bunch of golf balls that I've got stashed back there. Uh, hopefully I don't ever go through every single one of them, but, uh, eventually at some point I might, but you just never really know. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed the tour of the shop. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop me a line. Uh, if you're looking to start up your own shop and want to know what things are absolutely essential to own, uh, drop me a line. Like I said, I'll be happy to help you try to get that set up. I've accumulated this stuff over years and years, but uh, there are a few basic things that you would need. Um, you don't need anything too extreme, but um, like I said, feel free to ask any questions. I'll be happy to try to help you get your shop set up. You can do regrips, uh, reshafts, all those things are real super easy. Um, getting into the club bending and stuff like that, that, you know, that's something that you would do later on, save up some money and decide you're really fully into that kind of club repair type thing. But uh, the real easy stuff is inexpensive and really easy to set up. So uh, happy to help anybody out if they want to get that set up, or I can do a little, couple more videos just to show you how to do those things and uh, whether it's with my rig or with just stuff you might have around the house. Talk to you soon. Bye.